This week for you shall be a week of unusual testimonies. This month, what you have never seen before in terms of testimonies, in terms of breakthroughs, in terms of divine encounters, you will experience in the name of Jesus. The God of this commission will say to you, every misfortune in your life, in your family is turning to fortune in the name of Jesus. My God will give you global connections in the name of Jesus. Whatever you have been looking for, you will find it quickly in the name of Jesus. Shame, reproach shall be far from you. You shall be established in the name of Jesus Christ. Please put your great hands together for Jesus. And you may please be seated in the presence of the Lord. I have dominion. Congratulations. Now the word of God to us this month is financial fortune is my heritage. Can somebody repeat that again with me? Financial fortune is my heritage. Uh, starting from last Sunday, we began a teaching gateways to financial fortune. So part one, first service, second service. We want to build up today as we'll be looking at part two of that. On this service, we're looking at part two A. Gateways to financial fortune. We say gateway is simply access. It's one thing to know a thing, it's another thing to have access to it. God of heaven will give you passports to your financial fortune in this service in Jesus' mighty name. I encourage you to please get the teaching of last Sunday. We are building up on that. Come with me to Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. God's plan for you and I is to set us above all the nations of the earth. Not above your village. Not above your local government. Not above your state. Not above your nation. Not above your continent. Above all the nations of the earth. I want you to see the picture of where God is taking you and I to. But you see, for every promise of scriptures, there are two things. Number one, provisions. And number two, conditions. The provision here in the scripture we read is that he will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. That's the provision. Number two provision there that these blessings will come upon thee and overtake you. But what is the condition? He said, if you hearken and observe to do his commandment, which I command you this day. For every promise of scripture, there is provision and there is condition to meet. When you meet the condition, of the promise it turns to a covenant and at this point your desired provision of will be made available because God cannot deny himself and God cannot lie when you observe and keep the conditions the provisions are made available to you without begging Any time a man fulfills the condition for every scriptural promise, it becomes a covenant. Understand this, precious people of God. Promises can be broken, but covenant cannot be broken, especially covenant of God. I'm talking about the God side of it. Because in the quadratic equation of life, God is a constant factor. 
Man is a variable factor. There is no, there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning in God. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes from him. Somebody say, Pastor, I don't understand. Let's go to another scripture. Job 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. What is the condition? If they obey and serve him. What is the provision? They will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures, if you are interested. <laughs> Isaiah 119 If you be willing and obedient You shall eat the good of the land What is the condition? Be willing and obedient What is the, prov what is the provision? You eat the good of the land Luke 6 verse 38 Give and it shall be given to you Good measure Press down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give to your bosom? <laughs> what is the condition? Give. What is the provision? It shall be given to you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over. That's why wise people mind details. They try to find out what is required. What is the responsibility? Because every covenant will have the responsibility that you have to obey. The condition you have to meet. And when you meet it, there are benefits to follow. And the covenant is the bedrock, is the anchor for financial fortune. You shall remember the Lord your God. We saw that last Sunday. For it is he that given thee the power to make wealth. The power is given. If it's not given to you, it's a looter. <laughs> that you may establish the covenant which is what to thy fathers, even as it is this day. So any day you wake up, this day is still relevant. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 35. The Bible said, It is more blessed to give than to receive is more blessed if you want to experience this fortune find out what you must do <laughs> it is more blessed to give than to receive some are waiting to receive what you receive does not bless you it is what you give that blesses you that is why when you receive something, you discover you are happy. But when you give, you discover you are joyful. And joy is far stronger than happiness. Happiness is circumstantial. Happiness is environmental. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. As we progress in this teaching, what is financial fortune? Because you need to know what you are looking for so that when you see it, you know you have seen it. If you don't know what you are looking for, anything can look like it. <laughs> what is financial fortune? Number one, having sufficiency in all things. Having what? Sufficiency in all things. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 And God is able to make all grace abound towards you All grace, all grace, all grace Including the grace required for fortune That ye always Having all sufficiency in all things May abound to every good work No more lack in your life You will not lack good things again In the name of Jesus Always having all sufficiency. Look at the words used. Always having all sufficiency in all things. But what money can buy and what money cannot buy. When we are talking about fortune here, it's not the how much you have in your bank account, sir. It's the ability for your needs to be met when you need them. 
The power to get. Some people have power to buy. Others have power to get. <laughs> so the power to get is stronger than the power to buy. The power to get. You need it and it's supplied. You need it. The help comes. People borrow because when they need, they can't get it. So they have to find a way to use the world system to survive. <laughs> Pressure people of God. There's a place of fortune where you have all sufficiency in all things. What is financial fortune in our context? Number two, being enriched in all things. Being enriched in all things. Second Corinthians 9 11. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Being enriched, if you like, call it being blessed. In all things. Genesis 24 verse 1. Let's look at a picture of fortune. Scriptural picture of fortune. Genesis 24 verse 1. And Abraham was old and was taken in age. And God had blessed him. God has enriched him in all things. God has empowered him in all things. Because blessing is simply empowerment to succeed, empowerment to prosper, empowerment to make progress, empowerment to advance. God has enriched him. God has blessed him in all things. Don't you like that type? In all things. Not in some things. In all things. In all things. In health, you are blessed. In academics, you are blessed. In your marriage, you are blessed. In concerning your children, they are blessed. In all things, any area you touch, blessing. And he said, This blessing shall overcome upon you and overtake you. You'll be swimming in blessing if you will hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Look at the condition. If you get do the condition, you will get the blessing. Because God is no respecter of person. In every nation, everyone that fears God and walk in righteousness is acceptable to Him. If you understand this, there's no one you will envy in this world. You won't need to envy anyone. Just look, at, look for the condition and be doing it. It may not be the same volume, but with time, you see the line is going. Are you getting what I'm talking about? It may not be the same volume, but you can see the line. You can see the direction. What is financial fortune in our context number three bless to be a blessing bless to be what a blessing it is one thing to be blessed is another thing to be a blessing many pray god bless me i pray god make me a blessing you cannot become a blessing without being blessed first bless to be a blessing Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, or into a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Say with me, Lord, make me a blessing. <laughs> if you are blessing, you won't be borrowing. Are you getting what I'm talking about? You won't borrow. Because you are blessed enough to lend to even to nations. And he said, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. Which means, in any time, the people blessing you are more than those cursing you. Don't be afraid. The blessing will swallow the curse. Them will bless you, him will curse you. Do the mathematics. The blessing is more than the curse. And through you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Bless to be a blessing. When you reach this stage that God has blessed you to be a blessing, you become a succor to many. People are eating from you here and there. The thing refuse to finish. They know that you are entered into fortune. 
Look at the life of this Abraham we're talking about. Abraham became rich in gold and silver. Abraham became so liberal. He was so blessed that he became so liberal that if you are passing in his house, he will be calling you to come and eat in my house. That was how one day he entertained angels and got fruitfulness for the wife. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You know some people have, even when you come, they hide it. You saw them eat, you know, as you are coming, they just appear under the bed. And sometimes bingo we eat it. And they go and be vlogging the bingo. Now this somebody you, you will be waiting for people, you'll be sitting on the street looking for who to come, come and eat in my house. How many times have people eaten in your house? How many times have people slept in your house? If somebody is coming, you're asking, when are you going? <laughs> the person has not entered the house. <laughs> you're asking, when are you going? That is not fortunate. <laughs> so blessed that the king wanted to give the king. After he, 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 he got the he recovered lot and all that, he gave something to the king. He said, the, king, the man wanted to give him back. He said, no. Bless you, say you made Abraham rich. I want you to go from here today, a man, a woman with, that has a consciousness that I am in fortune. And if you are in fortune, you look for others to turn their misfortune to fortune. God wants you to be an extension of his hand, to be able to turn the misfortune of others to fortune. Somebody can pay house rent, you pay it. Somebody cannot pay a hospital bill, you pay it. Look for some people, widows, put them on salary. That's fortune. In your village, there are people that are crying. Some are looking for just more money to start law, and you can do it. Why not? Be a blessing. You are blessed to be a blessing. Remember, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed. More blessed. Some they don't bless anybody. They are not blessing God. They are not blessing pastor. They are not blessing uh, widow. They are not blessing student. They are not blessing anybody. Their own is consuming. A consumer will always look for more. A distributor will always have enough to distribute. I've told you here, you are not blessed by what people give to you. When you give to me, you are not blessing me. You are only using me to be blessed. <laughs> you are using me to be blessed. I'm only blessed when I give to you. I've used you to be blessed. Because they give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Run it over. Devil will never tell you to give. Any day you hear any voice telling you not to give, it's not from God. It's from the devil. Devil will never tell you to, to give. You know why? He knows that when you give, you prosper. He only wants you to waste your money somewhere. Go and do Niger bet. Or do. Go, <laughs> or go and, and drink some green bottle. Or give to a woman. And she will be begging the woman. Please, I will make it up. Your whole salary, director, carry it. Go I beg. Small girl. I, I will make it up. Just manage it. This is what I have now. <laughs> How can you build a house with a woman and you are paying rent? Can't you see the person is something has gone? Don't colo, colo. Anyone that found himself or herself in such place be recovered in the name of Jesus. Some people, their children are not going to school, they're training people in school. The wife is looking for money to buy food for the children you'll be sat in his pocket to look for the smallest money to give one thousand blood of jesus your wife is looking for 300 naira and you will say hey, why is there no meat in this in this night present nigeria 300 naira you're looking for meat may god forgive such person in the name of jesus what is a covenant a covenant is a deal 
enacted by God based on where defined terms and see with an oath. A covenant is a deal enacted by God based on where defined terms and see with an oath. A covenant is stronger than a promise. I told you promise can be broken. Covenant cannot be broken. Why? Covenant is seed with an oath. When God could not swear with any other person, he swore. You know, there are two people God swore to. Number one was Abraham. God swore by himself. God that said we shouldn't swear. He said, Abraham, because you have done this, in blessing I will bless you. In multiplying I will multiply you. Your children will take the battle to the gates of their enemies. <laughs> Through you, child, the nations of the earth be blessed. Now, for David, God's war with his holiness. When I look at what God did with David, God, he swore God. Read Psalm 89. God swore with his holiness that you will never leave David, you know, forsake him. Even if his children sin, oh, God said you will just beat them small and draw them back. That's why God could give him a street in heaven. How many of you have street in your village? David has a street in heaven. David, when you get to heaven, you see David gates. That's David's street in heaven. A man like you and I has a street in heaven. Hebrews chapter 6, 13 to 18. For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and note for a confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. A covenant is a deal enacted by God based on where defined terms. There are responsibilities, there are benefits, and seed with an oath that will give you confidence because God will never fail in his own sight. Psalm 89 verse 34, he will never break his covenant nor utter anything that goes out of his life. That's why when you are in this covenant and you are practicing it, you can be rest assured of how tomorrow will look like. <laughs> what you did yesterday brought you to today. What you are doing today is taking you to your tomorrow. So you can, you can predict tomorrow. Success is predictable. Please recognize that our giving is not a financial donation to help God. Because that's where some people miss it. Let's just help this God. Nobody can help God. Ask Oza when you see him. When the ark was falling, he tried to help God to hold him. God said, you are too small to, to help me. He was struck dead. You can't help God. So it's not a financial donation to help God. It's not a financial donation to help the church. It's not a financial donation to help the pastor. It is a spiritual transaction that releases heavenly blessing upon the lives. Now, if you discover in church today, one of the difficult things the devil will not want you to do is to give. He will give you different reasons why you should not do it. Why? He knows that it's a spiritual transaction. And when you do it, the blessing of God comes upon you. Comes upon you. So it's a privilege. Anytime you have the opportunity, it's a privilege. Don't miss it. Hear this. God is the source. And there are many channels. So anytime it takes you to give, or you have opportunity to give, he wants to use you as part one of the channels. If you refuse, he will raise other channels. Is somebody following me now? He remains the source. God is like the ocean. If you see for every ocean, there are some rivers that are from tributaries that supply water to the ocean. The ocean does not go, go dry. Some rivers can dry sometimes. Dry during dry season. But the ocean does not go dry. So anytime you refuse to supply, because when God tells you to give, any opportunity to give, that means it's your turn to do. If you refuse to do it, he will raise all that channels. And thereby you will lose your privilege of being blessed. And another will take it. Say with me, God forbid and I forbid. 
Haggai chapter 2, 6 to 8. For thus said the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. So the silver is his own, the gold is his own. Don't ever see yourself as an owner self. Anything God has given, what have you that you have not received? You are simply a caretaker. So when he said, channel it to this area, do it. And then you keep supplying it. But when you say no, you are denied yourself the opportunity to be blessed. Remember, every laborer is worthy of his hire. Luke 10, 17. Luke 10, 7. Every laborer. So when you do what he commands you to do, he will always pay you back. Quickly, let's look at practical terms for the covenant of financial fortune. Practical terms for the covenant of financial fortune. Number one we want to look at is tithing. Tithing is simply 10% of your increase, 10% of your income. And when I'm talking about your income, it's your gross income, not your net income. You have collected loan and they are collecting the money. And I say, this is what entered my hand. The, the house you use the loan to build or the car, do you want it to be without a, a cover? Because tight is an insurance, it's a divine insurance, it's a divine insurance cover. So that the devil, the devourer, will not spoil the work of your hand. Everyone pays tight, it depends on where you pay your own. Some people pay to the devourer, which who can collect any percentage. But tithing is key to a world of financial fortune. Malachi 3, 10 to 18, the Bible told us, that you should bring all the tithe into the storehouse and let there be meat in my house. And prove me now if I have not opened the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing that your house will not be able to contain. That's supernatural ideas. No heavens return system. Maybe next Sunday we're going to see that. He went ahead to say in verse 17 and 18 that he's going to distinguish between them that in the days he will make his jewel, he will distinguish between them that serve him and them that serve him not. Oga, ma. Anyone paying tight and the one that's not paying, the difference they show. Find out. <laughs> different they show. Some are paying the hospital. Others are paying to mechanic. Others are paying to breakdowns, to thieves. Did you hear the testimony of that woman? When she, they stole her motorbike, she said, I'm a tighter. I'm not this, this shouldn't bother me. I'm a tighter. Did she recover the motorbike or not? If it's a non tighter I may not recover it though. I may not. Because Devora. <laughs> Devora will say, Uncle Devo, you just be eat. There's something they call in my play, change. You know, you will be eating the things more, small, small, small until you finish it. That's how he's eating some people's finance. Mm. Whenever they get money now, you see everybody will force it. Pia. Hospital here, hospital here. When the money finishes, you think we'll wait. Immediately another money comes. <laughs> devil, devil, Uncle Devil is eating. Some may be. I learned this thing the hard way. I don't want you to go that way. I don't want you. Please simply obey. It. Don't allow anybody to deceive you and say, "Hey, maybe they just want to be making money in church." Talk. If you, that's if they are understanding. But for your information, as I'm talking to you now, I pay tight. This church, he said, the church pays. We now chapel worldwide pays. So it's not even for you, only you. As a, if you have a company, pay for your company. Let it not come. That's what you call corporate title. Let it not come under the siege of the devil. Because if Uncle, Uncle Devil face you, you may not survive it. So hide your head until the calamity is overpass. The art is already, Malachi 4, 1 to 2. The art is already burning like an oven, oh. It's, you know, you feel the heat of the oven, you don't see the, the fire. The earth is already burning. And it's going to, the Bible said, that day it will, the earth will burn like an oven. It burn the proud. Yea, all that do wickedly shall be stopped. And the day that come, shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts. That it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Some people have been rendered useless now. We can become as big men. One sickness can clear up even what somebody has earned for life. So take cover. 
But unto you that fear my name, the Bible says, they shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stars. When you are obeying this covenant, you'll be going up. There is no place to go in. You'll be going up from one level to the other. From one level to the other. How is all of us can understand this and embrace this? Number two we want to see today is the first fruits. The tithe is 10%. The first fruit is wholesome. Ezekiel 44 verse 30. And the first of all, the first fruit of all things, of all things, of all things, every oblation of all, of every sort of your oblation, shall be the priest. Ye shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough, that he may cause the blessing to rest in thy house. How many of us want blessing to rest in our houses? There's always a condition. And there's always a provision. I want the blessing to rest in my house. This is the condition. Pay your first fruits. Number three. Giving towards kingdom advancement procures favor. There are other kingdom advancement channels. We have seen that last Sunday. Please get the teaching of last Sunday. Giving for project, promotion of the kingdom. Like this mission, mission, uh, adoption scheme now. Be part of it. Every member of the church will be part of that. Don't tell me I don't have this order. Start from where you are. Start from where you are. Start from where you are. I remember 2000, the year 2000. A program was started, Mission to the World. It was Mission to the World. As a pastor, God, what do I do? How do I be part of this mission to the world? <laughs> he said, my car. <laughs> and I sold the car and dropped it. Be part of it. Somebody may be giving you one million. You may not have one million. If it's ten naira, you have. Be part of it. Just check your level and be part of it. It's part of kingdom advancement. And as the kingdom of God is advancing, you're advancing. Let no one member of this church despise this opportunity because I know God wants to take us to the next level. As a pastor, I'm also involved. Glory to God. I'm not blessed because I'm a pastor. I'm blessed by what I give. Are you getting me now? Every one of us were important and we respect you. But hear me and hear me well. It's not what you give that blesses the church. It is what the church also is doing. It's not also what you give to the pastor that is blessing the pastor. It's what the pastor is doing. The same way you too, it is what you are giving that God is using to bless you. If you are not a giver, the struggle continues. God forbid. So learn that habit. You know, because what some of us know about money is from a family background. Your family background will always affect your disposition financially. So now that you are born again, you know better. You see your mother, every time you cook, you hide the food. You want to do like that? Can't you see how things? No, don't do it. Learn, you are learning better now. Because the illiterate of the 21st century are not people who cannot uh, read or write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn and relearn. Now you are coming to church that teaching you what is making people to shine. You to do it. Don't say, I know my father, you know they give anybody you. You want to live like your father? How did your father end? May God give us understanding. So deliver yourself. But one thing I know is that anything you give towards the kingdom will provoke favor. Let's see something in the, the, the book of Luke 7, 1 to 6. One day after Jesus has ended speaking to them, he entered into Capernaum. A certain centurion servant came to him. And that centurion servant was sick. And the people came to him. Because the man wanted Jesus to come and heal his servant. And the people came to speak on behalf of the man. You know the reason they gave to Jesus? They said, this man loved our country. He had built synagogues for us. Immediately Jesus had Jesus left to go and heal the child. Are you getting what I'm talking about? 
your giving provo- whether you like it or not, is natural. It's natural. A man's gift makes room for him. Two of us. You may not like it. You say, oh, why are they doing this? Why are they find out what they're doing? A man's gift makes room for him. Look at this man. Because he loved the land. And best synagogues for them. When he needed help, they came to Jesus. He said, look, oh, anything you are doing, cancel your program. Go and hear this man's child. He loves us. He are best synagogues for us. Jesus left. Jesus didn't argue with them. Jesus left. Hmm. That's our Lord and Savior. He left to go and hear the child. Before the man, they said, look, no, 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 no. I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. Just send your word. My servant shall be healed. But Jesus, yeah, he was already on his way. Immediately, he left. Why? The man loved our land. He abused synagogue for us. Jesus is the same as God, though. Is it not so? <laughs> so when you get involved in this thing, that's how God will give you special attention. And others will be asking, I don't know. Hey, Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love. Oh. People will be wondering, how is it happening? But you know what you are doing. May God give us understanding. As we close, what are the fringe benefits of covenant practice? What are the fringe benefits? Because every covenant will have the responsibilities and benefits. What are the previous benefits? What, are, what do I stand to gain when I give myself to covenant practice? Number one, aversion of causes and plagues. Aversion of causes and plagues. Genesis 8, 20 to 22. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord made a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again cause the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smit any more every living thing as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Now look at it. Thresh back. When Adam fell, God didn't cause Adam, but God caused the ground that he needed for help. So he said he would till, he would sweat before he would eat from the ground. But that cause on the ground was lifted by one man's giving, called Noah. He gathered all the clean bees and gave to God the sacrifice. And God smelled a sweet smelling savour. May God smell a sweet smelling savour anytime we give. And God said, Kai, Walai, I will not cause the earth again. From that day, God started dealing with people as individuals, not dealing with people generally. That's why our own case now may be somehow. <laughs> Before this time, all of us will suffer the same fate. But from Noah's time, everyone according to your level. Seed time. There's always seed time. But harvest. No time, open ended. Seed time and harvest shall not cease. So if you give, the harvest will sure to come. Give and it shall be given to you. That cause on the ground was lifted. That is how today every cause that been on any family, every misfortune on any family, I command it to turn to fortune. God stood that day and reversed the irreversible. Every irreversible in your life, in your family, I stand here today as an agent of hell. I command them to be reversed. Your morning is turning into dancing in the name of Jesus. But see the way to it. Your giving can destroy causes of any kind and plagues. Another example, 2 Samuel 24, 24 to 25. Remember, David was moved to count the people. Is there anything wrong in doing census? No. But the motive was wrong. And you know, God looks at the hearts. So it was the motive that God was angry with. Because Moses, David was trying to shift focus from God to the people. He thought it was the people that was giving him victory. The number of soldiers, not God. So God was angry. And God visited David. I said, choose now. Three things that will happen to you. Your enemies will chase you for three months. 
there'll be a famine, there's going to be a plague. Choose anyone. <laughs> David said, God, let me fall into your hand. If my enemy checks me for one minute and finish, let me fall into your hand because you're a merciful God. Before you know it, 70,000 people were already dead. David said, these people are not the people that committed this sin. I'm the one that committed it. Deal with me. Leave these people alone. Sometimes, what we'll do will affect those who follow us without knowing. Families, congregations, organizations, they never know. But God, by his mercy, said, okay, the only way to overcome this is to go and rear an altar of sacrifice in the treasure floor of Aruna. And David got there. Aruna said, look, you're my king. I want to give it to you free. He said, no, I will never give anything to my God that will not cost me something. And when he reared the altar of sacrifice, God stayed the plague. He said, enough is enough. Stay your hand. The plague stays. I don't know the plague that been plaguing your finances, your business, your career, plaguing your life. Sicknesses that have defied cure. You can stop them by your giving. You can stop them by your sacrifice. And I command such to cease today in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Number two, your giving engenders divine hurts. Engenders divine hurts. Psalm 41, 1 to 3. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. Thou, and thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him unto the bed of languishing. And thou will make all his bed in his sickness, which means he will cure him, he will heal him. John 15, 2. Every branch in me that beareth no fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that he may bring forth much fruit. God will purge it, remove all the nyamanyama, kill. Your giving can produce hurt for you. Money cannot buy hurt, per se. I mean, you quote that there is soundness of hurt. Yes, you can receive cure with your money by buying drugs, but you cannot be perfectly healthy with money <laughs> glory to God only God can give you divine head without you troubling going from here and there for maintenance and giving can open the door to it everyone that been given here I command your heads to be restored <laughs> number three it secures divine protection it secures divine protection. Psalm 21, 2, 3. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from his sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all your offering and save thy bond sacrifice. Grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. The Lord defend thee. The God of Jacob defend thee. And accept your offering. Your offering can provoke divine defense. Job 22 verse 25. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of savor. When God blesses you through the covenant, one of the things he does, he defends you. He defends you. He defends you. Defend their prosperity. That's what God gives. So when you are a giver, you can enjoy divine defense. He can send you help out of his sanctuary. He can strengthen the earth of Zion. He will defend you. And he will hear you in the day of trouble. And number four, he secures posterity. Your children, your children, children, your generation can eat from your giving. When you know this, not only will you be doing it, you will initiate your children into doing it. Don't ever shout down on your children when they ask your daddy, mommy, where is my offering? Yeah, what is offering? What do you know about offering? Get out the car, get to the church. <laughs> Teach them how to do it. Teach them how to do it. When in Burkina one time, and my children that time, they were very little, very, maybe three years, ah, and they were packing their clothes that they are not sizing. They said, we want to go and give some people in church. And one woman was there. He said, ah, you mean these children know this one already? Yeah. Teach them. Teach them. Teach them. 
Don't restrain them. They want to give something to somebody. Say, hold your hand. Buy one. Teach them. Psalm 119, Psalm 112, 1 to 9. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord and delighted greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endure forever. Unto the upright there rises light in darkness, and he is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be an everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is filled, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see the desire upon his enemies. He had dispersed. He had given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Now hear me. What you are giving today, your children can eat from it. One day, a lady came here and stood and shared a testimony and said, that somebody saw her. He said, I remember what your father did for me. And because of that, that opened doors of blessing. What you are doing today, your children will eat from it. So that's why you should not relent. Are you getting me now? You should not relent. Keep doing it. Keep pressing on. Because your tomorrow will be better than your today. Rise on your feet. Is somebody angry with pastor? I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. Hmm. You know, when they come to this type, some people don't like it. They're just, everybody are quiet. They don't like it. <laughs> Glory to God. Sometimes we teach you like this. Now, before we pray and partake of the anointing today, which is going to be anointing for what? Anointing for fortune. Your family will begin to experience fortune. Misfortune will turn to fortune. Generational bondages, poverty shall be broken. Amen. Now, before we do that, I want everybody to, I know there are sincere people here. I want you to look inwards. Check yourself. Is your heart with God? The first thing God is looking for from you is not your money. It is your heart. Say with me, your heart. That is what God is looking for. Proverbs 23 verse 26. My son... Give me your heart. If God can get your heart, every other thing will take shape. People are not giving today because God has not had access to their hearts. They are struggling because they have not given their heart to God. Because where the treasures of a man is, there his heart will be. Their heart is still in what they have because they don't know that it's God that owns what they have and them. Glory to God. Now somebody is here, you know it, your heart is not with God. And you are a sincere person, you say, Lord, I'm tired. I can't continue like this. Lord, I'm giving you my heart. I'm giving you my heart. Somebody is here to pray that kind of prayer salvation today. Please put your hand on your chest. You want to give Jesus your heart to be your Lord and your Savior? Put your hand on your chest right now. Somebody gave his heart someday, but you are no more there. Pressures of life, cares of this world, deceitment of, rich, uh, of riches, and pressures, peer pressures, and all that push you away. You want to return to him. You want to rededicate your life to him. Why not? Return to him, he will return to you. Put your hand also in your chest. I want to pray this prayer of salvation with you. And somebody has been struggling with certain evil habits, you know it. You can't get an inheritance in a family, you are not a member. You may be coming to church, but you are not a member of this household. You can't get anything. So you want to say, Lord, I'm tired. I break this yoke of evil habit and set me free. I surrender my heart to you. Why not put your hand also on your chest if among that category of people and pray this prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I've come to you today. I cannot help myself. Forgive me of my past. Jesus, give me a new beginning. From my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. I surrender to you. Save me. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Write my name in the book of life. I am born again. I am a child of God. I believe that you are the only son of God. You died. You resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart out of my mouth, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. I give you my heart. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' glorious name. In Jesus' glorious name. Please, you pray that prayer with me. Wave your hand to Jesus wherever you are. You pray that prayer with me. 
Oh, I know there is a people here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please carry your bag, your Bible, whatever you came to church with. Walk to the front of the altar. Be sure to carry your point of contact also. Um, you come with a little card. We are the road to prayer request. Maybe we are giving by invitation. Come, give it to the ushers also. Please come, 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 come. I will make. My life, your dwelling place, I will build your throne in my heart. Our Father, Representing the work of your hand. When God blesses, He blesses the work of your hand. You are known with the work of your hand. I say, whatever He doeth shall prosper. Now we are going to pray this way, Father. As I walk in the covenant, in the name of Jesus, release divine fortune upon my business, upon my career, upon my family, upon my life, upon my endeavors. Did you get that, Father? As I walk in the covenant. In the name of Jesus, release divine fortune upon my life, my business, my career, my family, my endeavors. Lift your voice. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. This Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today. As you empower me to walk in the covenant, as you help me to hearken to the word you have commanded me this day, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. Lord, in the name of Jesus, release your fortune upon my life, my family, my career, my business, my endeavors. Help me, Lord. Please, if I touch you, go towards my right. Go to my right. Please go towards my right. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask of you today, as I walk in the covenant, enable me, empower me. Release upon me fortune. Turn every misfortune to fortune. Turn everything that needs to be done for my fortune to come. Release your fortune upon my life, upon my family, upon my business, upon my career, upon the work of my heart, represented by this point of contact. Father, let there be change of story for me. Let there be generational change of story. Let my money turn into dancing. Let fortune swallow every misfortune. Release your fortune upon me. Father, in this day, let your fortune answer to me. Answer to my family. Answer to my ministry. Answer to my finances. Answer to my career. Make me fortunate. Jesus, help me. I give you glory. I give you praise. In Jesus' glorious name. Lift up that point of contact right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Every work of hand represented here, I command them to be cemented with fortune. Every work of hand that is represented here, I command them to begin to move forward. 
I decree in the name of Jesus you will never have a better yesterday in your business, in your career, in your devil. From now, I speak speech to the work of your hand. Fortune to the work of your hand. No more misfortune. No more losses. No more breakdown. In the name of Jesus, God will connect you with this that matter in your matter. He will give you international breakthroughs. Yes. Where you least expect it, where you cannot enter, God will represent you. He will represent the work of your hand. Some of us here, you will be putting your name in the heart of those that matter for appointment, for contracts, for breakthroughs, for payments. In the name of Jesus, I decree from now, the smell of the work of your hand will be like the smell of the blessed of the Lord. Wherever you go, the work of your hand will begin to attract fortune. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Every request that is dropped here become testimonies in the name of Jesus. Father, see to it in your faithfulness that every request here is granted. Show mercy and show help. And let there be turning of captivities in Jesus' glorious name. Prosperity will answer to you. Fortune will answer to you in Jesus' mighty name. Now we go into the anointing section proper. Bring your bottle of olive oil. In the market is a chemistry, but when it's blessed, it becomes a mystery. <laughs> this is anointing for family fortune and anointing for weights. <laughs> when this one comes upon you, weight will be smelling around you. Every family here, you will not see misfortune again. Every form of misfortune, generational misfortune will be swallowed up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 92, 10 to 14. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. <laughs> Say the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in his cause. Even in old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. Now, by this anointing, even in old age, you'll be fruitful. Yeah. Even in old age, things will, begin to, things will continue to work in your life. Yeah. No system, no organ of your body will go down. Yeah. Father, we thank you today. We we'll sanctify this to be the holy anointing oil. Wherever this is, you let your power flow. Father, this becomes the holy anointing oil. And by this, we decree that fortune will be released. Yeah. Every family misfortune is turned to family fortune. Yeah. By this anointing, let wealth be released. Yeah. Wherever this is used, Lord, let the power to make wealth be activated. Yeah. When you anointed David, your spirit came upon him. Let your spirit, O oh Lord God of heaven, come upon every participant. Yeah. Therefore, put every misfortune on a reverse. Please take a little of that. If your neighbor doesn't have, give him or her. Put it on your forehead and begin to prophesy what you desire. Father, I'm anointed today for fortune. By this anointing, I command fortune upon my generation. By this anointing, I command every misfortune to put on a reverse. By this anointing, I command my name to be mentioned in high places for good in the name of Jesus. By this anointing, I command supernatural lifting. By this anointing, I command blessing to overtake me. By this anointing, I command every curse to be broken. By this anointing, I command generational change of story. By this anointing, I command weight to answer to me in higher dimension. By this anointing, I decree supernatural ideas. The Spirit of the Lord is resting upon me. By this anointing, I command sicknesses that diseases to go. By this anointing, exalt my horn like the horn of a unicorn. Let yokes of poverty be broken. Let yoke of indebtedness be broken. Let every indebtedness cease. By this anointing, everyone owing me, I command them to pay up. They will not find rest of peace until they pay me. By this anointing, I will no longer be rejected. Anywhere I go, I'll be accepted. By this anointing, my forehead will never reject blessing. Blessing will come upon me and overtake me. I will flourish like a palm tree. I will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. By this anointing, I'm planted in the house of the Lord. Therefore, I shall flourish in his corn. Flourishing becomes my portion. Flourishing becomes the portion of my family. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, ancient of days. Aka panaga te suroko. Mapanaga ekete eklekete turaga. Zanzana tapa ekeke turobo. Shusa katada. Aklanglalete. Fara manoiten. No more better yesterday. The year shall end well for me. This anointing will provoke unusual favor for me, unusual fortune for me. I shall abound with all grace. By this anointing, all sufficiency will answer to me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' excellent name.